Hello everyone, my name is David Kohar and I want to give you a brief overview of our forecast accuracy solution that we created for Microsoft Dynamics CRM. We created the forecast accuracy solution to primarily answer these three questions. Based on the pipeline or looking at an individual deal that a sales rep is actually forecasting, how likely are they to win this deal? How likely are they to win this deal in the time frame they say they're going to win it? And lastly, how likely are they to win it for that amount that they're predicting or forecasting they're going to win it for? The forecast accuracy solution starts to track all this information and evidence historically to give you insight in terms of your sales team's ability to accurately forecast their deals. So how the solution actually works is every time a deal is given a rating in the system. Now, out of the box, we're using best case, most likely, and commit. So each time an opportunity is put into one of those ratings, we're going to capture some data. We're going to capture the estimated close date, the revenue, and the rating itself. Now, we're only going to do that the first time that that given opportunity is rated for that given level. And that is we don't want the actual sales team to be going back and forth multiple times and actually gaming our data that we're actually capturing. So we're only going to capture it the first time they've put it into best case or most likely or into commit. And then ultimately, when the deal itself closes, we're going to start to capture and create some forecast accuracy records. Now, this is going to allow us to start to give some specific feedback and KPIs around revenue accuracy, days accuracy, and ultimately rating accuracy itself. So let's dive into CRM and have a look at the solution and see how it's actually capturing this information. So we're logged into Microsoft Dynamics CRM here, and I want to touch on a couple of the key dashboards that we've created for the forecast accuracy solution. At the top here on this first dashboard, we're getting win rates. So win rates when we had committed the deal versus deals that were at one point in most likely versus deals that were at one point in best case, you can see the different win rates that we've had. So if on average, the last three months, if a deal was put in commit, we win about 83% of the time. Similarly, if deals were at one point put in best case, we win those just over 60% of the time. As you would expect, that, that percentage is going to go down as the team was less and less confident of actually winning that opportunity. We want to look at forecast accuracy from the standpoint of did the actual salesperson bring the deal in or close the deal on the date that they had originally predicted they would. We can see here varying levels of degrees of accuracy. So for deals that were ultimately committed, in fact, David can actually bring in deals on average six days faster. And on average, Evan's taken an extra five days to bring those deals in. And you can see how those different day ranges actually change here across the board as we had different levels of degrees of confidence in the actual deal itself closing in terms of best case, most likely, and commit. If I pop over to the second dashboard that we're calculating, we're going to see a little bit more detail around the actual win rates themselves. So, for example, when deals were committed, in fact, David only wins 67% of the time on his commit deals, whereas if we look at Evan's example here or Allison for that example, you know, they're winning on average much higher. So their predictability of deals that are commit are much higher than David's particular ability to win deals that are put in commit at least over the last three months. You can see that for their accuracy across most likely deals as well as best case deals. And then finally, you can see how on average the actual amount that they brought in when they did win the deal varied from what they thought they were going to bring in at the time that they had set that rating or that deal into that particular rating stage. So if you look at um, David, for example, he on average actually is down $24,000 on his deals when he first committed it versus when he actually brings it indoors. So on average, for example, if his deals were $100,000 that he thought he was going to do um, when he was committing that deal, he's actually bringing them in at $76,000. So you can start to see how accurate the team is across different rating levels in terms of how likely they are to get the amount of revenue that they thought they were actually going to get. So lots of good data here across those three dimensions. Now, I want to drill in a little bit deeper into the actual information itself. And if we look at the actual records that are being created in CRM here, this is where we can start to do a little, even a little bit more analysis. So we've created a number of views because we really thought about how you might most accurately want to look at this information. You'll see, of course, we have an active forecast accuracy view across all the records itself. While that view is 
helpful in some cases. It's probably not a view we're going to use very often to do any real analysis. What we're probably going to do is really look at our different rating levels here. We have best case, we have most likely, and we have commit. And then within each one of those ratings, we have three real key views that we want to look at. All of the ratings themselves, or all the actual records themselves. We want to look at maybe just the last three months, or only when we actually won, how did that information actually show itself. So I'm going to come down here and click on the commit accuracy. And you'll see, of course, I'm going to see all the deals that were rated as commit, whether we won or lost them. And I can start to look at some of that information. So this, again, might be a great place for me to come back and look at based on my commits across the entire time that I've been tracking this, we can see that on average we're about 83%. If I want to look at it by month, I can see how we've been doing trending across the different months. So we were much lower, actually, of the deals that closed in September. We got you know, a little bit higher in October, and we started to slip again in November. If I want to, again, see that by rep, I can see that across the board here as well. And so I get some good information around that. Now, if I want to look at more the revenue or at the date accuracy, I probably want to look at just the deals that were won because, of course, if they lost the deals, the actual revenue was zero versus whatever the amount might have been predicted to be. So your numbers are going to be quite skewed. Similarly, if we lose a deal, we might be losing it quicker because we're just canceling it out. So we want to look at the deal sort of going through its entire cycle. So if I come over to and look at the estimated revenue, again, I can look at this prediction. And this is the actual revenue versus the estimated revenue. And again, we can see that David's not doing so well as far as predicting or he's being too optimistic on how he's rating his deals at that time in terms of the revenue amount he's likely to get versus what he actually gets. And then similarly, when we want to look at date accuracy, on the other hand, David's bringing the deals in much more quickly and Evan's taking longer. But if we go back here, we can see that, in fact, Evan's not losing nearly as much money. So again, this might be a great coaching opportunity for the sales managers out there to say, hey, maybe you're pushing those deals through too quickly or too quickly going to discounting to you know get the deal done or get it off the street. But maybe you're doing that too quickly because you're giving too much on revenue to try to get the deal in quicker. So there's probably some offsetting discussions that can happen here really to help the, the individual sales members really start to think about that work they're doing in the sales cycle itself. So with that, I want to do a quick wrap up. I want to thank you for watching the Forecast Accuracy Solution Overview video. If you have any questions about the solution itself, please feel free to reach out to your account director at 0 to 10. Thank you.